The Godfather of Harlem, season two, episode 10. A lot in this episode. Uh, there's a, uh, a unarmed man, uh, black man was, uh, shot by the police that sparked the Harlem riots. And the same time this is going on, you got Adam Clayton Powell and Linda Baines Johnson trying to get this, uh, civil rights bill through and then it, and it goes through and, um, has to be signed in law by President Lyndon Baines Johnson and Adam Clayton Powell. They hug and embrace each other. And he said that he wanted to give him some, not the ceremonial pen. He wanted to give him one of his lives when he first went and became a congressman. Lyndon Baines Johnson gave it to Adam Clayton Powell. You got Bumpy trying to get this, the one of the largest shipments ever in Harlem in uh, from, from uh, Marseille from France. And uh, they got those uh, the contraband in these uh, crates that was supposed to be like rat poison or something. And they're trying to get it to the uh, warehouse, Bumpy's warehouses. Then you have uh, Chen Gigante's lawyer finds some information to give to, Ch uh, to Chen that the informant was his own daughter that was given all the intel about his operations. And he doesn't believe it. He's very upset. And he also knows that his brother was talking to Stella. They got the recording of, of uh, Stella talking to him on the payphone. And he gets really mad and confronts his brother. And, and brother, they get into a little fight. And he said, I've been covering for you. And I'm a priest, and I know that what you're doing is not by God's will. And um, and he also reveals that uh, he had to protect Stella by uh, marrying Ernie and Stella. And he finds out about that part of it, and he's like, oh, boy. Then Malcolm and Bumpy are talking. And um, Bumpy wants to provide Malcolm with security because um, that you know he used to talk on the street what's what's going on and the people in the temple and the different temples want him dead, you know. And um, he's like he doesn't want uh, Bumpy's help because his association with uh, his criminal activities and. He said, well, you remember, you remember you said that when the gangster becomes political, it becomes a threat to white society. And he said, yeah, I remember that. And he said, let me try to help you, you know. And uh, that was going on. And then you got Bumpy getting his shoes shined by Cecil and Morgenthau sits right by him and tells them that he hears on the wiretaps that they got a big they got a big shipment coming in harlem one of the biggest shipment of uh, narcotics in harlem and bumpy plays coy like he doesn't know what's going on and um you know he talks about his um uh, that you know you, you could have had a different type of lifestyle if you uh didn't become a criminal you know he said that uh Morgan thought said that his people were Jews and they've been oppressed and he came to this country and he became he got became a lawyer. Uh he's a federal prosecutor for the government. And Bumby told him, Well, he had applied to a law school, but he was denied because he when they found out that he was black, they would they they denied his application. And he's trying to tell him that, you know, people make choices in life. And that he didn't choose to be a criminal. That was, that was the hand that was dealt to him. So that's what he had to do it with. So that was powerful. Then he also revealed to him that he had some, because he was talking about Malcolm. He said he got, you know, intel that there's a plot by the temple, some members in the temple, in temple number seven, to assassinate Malcolm when he does that uh, interview with Mike Wallace on television at this um, network. So, uh, so he knows that at the same time, Mamie and um, 
Elise, they um, are going to this protest and it's the riots breaking out and a policeman uh, beats up Mamie and uh, she has bruises on her face. And um, so Bumpy goes to goes back home and see what's going on. And Bambi says she was beat up by a cop and he wants to know who the cop's name so he, he wants them dead. And he also revealed to them that he got intel from Morgan thought that Malcolm uh, Malcolm X was going to be assassinated by some members of the temple, temple number seven. Prior to that, uh, Omar was talking to Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad said that he want no members of the NOI to do anything to Malcolm, to harm Malcolm or his family. Um, and he said that goes against his wishes. But then Omar and Captain Harry, they talk and they say, well, today we're not in the NOI. And they take their hats off uh, and they get prepared to get some type of uniforms where they can go there and ambush Malcolm at the uh, network and take care, take uh, his security detail down. And um, so we know that. And then Bump, Bumpy talking to uh, Mamie and Elise, and Elise gets up and goes because she says she has to go to the temple. And she and uh, Bumpy said, "Don't go to the temple. You know, I advise you not to go there." So she goes uh, dressed in her Islamic garb and she goes to the temple and that sister, Sister Marty, whatever, she's like, what you doing up in here? And she said, where, where is Omar going to? And, and she uh, said, you get out of here, you traitor, you you so and so and so. And she grabs her and said, you know darn good and well, I will, if you don't tell me, I will hurt you. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, at least they done. that's Bubby Johnson's daughter. She ain't playing. And they she gives them the intel where Omar and Captain Harry's supposed to be to ambush Malcolm when he comes out of the studio. So the riots are going crazy. They it's five people fire firebombing uh stores and businesses, and it's it's like a big mad madness. And Malcolm's um you know, get ready, get ready to go to that uh, Mike Wallace thing. And Elise tells Bumpy um, the information or what's going down because uh, he had on, she had the uh, Muslim garb on when he came. She came back to the house. And he's like, "What you got that on for?" He said, "I had to go to tell him to find out what was going on about Omar and Captain here are plotting to kill Malcolm." So she knew that those were the guys who was going to do it. You know, and, and um. So Bumby said, don't worry, I got it. And, and um, uh, Chance and Pettigrew called, I mean, they called to tell them about, we got the, uh, the narcotics in the warehouse, but we don't think it's safe with all these riots and stuff going on. We need to move it somewhere else. And he's like, uh, don't worry about it. He said, uh, you just do the best you can. I'm going to take care of, um, I got something they got to take care of. So he's there to try to protect Malcolm. So, um, so Malcolm goes, does the speech, uh, Mike Wallace in the, uh, on the television thing. And he's talking about, you know, the system of oppression and has done, um, people of color, black people. And, um, and people said, why are people burning their houses and blowing up things? And, and, and he said, well, you know, you as a people, you get tired of being uh, mistreated and beat down, and and then the only resort that you have sometimes is to fight back the best way you can. So he's trying to trying to you know show it in a manner, not saying that people want to do that, but you keep pushing people and doing things to them, then they're gonna fight back and push back at you. So. He gets to the uh, thing, and then Chen Giganti, uh you know, finds out. Like I said, finds out that uh, that you know that uh, Ernie and uh, Stella are married, and they had to get married in order to protect, uh, so they wouldn't have to testify against him. And uh, 
his brother knew about it and everything. And so he told one of the guys to go kill Ernie. Ernie had the idea to, to, to rob a bank in Harlem. And they, by everybody's with the riots going on, nobody know who did it. And he says, it's a good idea to bring this guy that he told the guy and confide in the guy that, that that's the guy that killed Benny. So this guy is going on, on a mission with Ernie and also to try to kill Ernie. So uh, he goes and tries to stop it because, you know, Stella said if something happened to Ernie, she was never going to forgive him. So he tries to go stop it. And before he can get there, uh, the guy shoots Ernie in the head and kills Ernie. And he's, and he, Chinja got to just spazzing out, going crazy. Um, and then he gets back home and tells, and Stella hears that, uh, that he had the guy kill uh, Ernie and was trying to stop it. And uh, so I guess she goes to Morgenthau and tells Morgenthau, and they come and pick up Chinjigante and arrest Chinjigante. And he's really upset, and he said, "I tried, I tried to stop. It. I really tried to stop it." And then at the same time, like I said, Malcolm's at the uh, thing with Mike Wallace, and his security details being ambushed by Omar and Captain Henry, and Bumpy's trying to get there to protect Malcolm and uh, one guy is getting ready to shoot Malcolm I think it's Captain Henry and Bubby comes with a switchblade and uh, slices Nick <laughs> and um, the other guy he's shaking that's Omar he's got the gun pointed at him he's shaking and uh he said, uh, it's not over, Malcolm. And he takes off and runs into the night. And they have this iconic picture of Malcolm with the iconic AK-47 trying to protect himself. And but there's another window down from it. We don't see this supposed to be Bumpy Johnson. And I don't know if that's historically true, but we know that it's the iconic photo of Malcolm holding the gun. And I think this is the last season. Because ironically, from what I understand, I do a lot of research um bumpy was the security detail for malcolm and i think up to two after two weeks before he got assassinated he told bumpy that he didn't want to use his security detail anymore and then ultimately malcolm got killed assassinated murdered so uh, this is a very interesting episode historically it has a lot of historical references of the past and and we see a lot of things in, in 2021, the same type of stuff, unarmed killings, George Floyd and, uh, you know, the you know the Mike Brown thing prior to that and Sandra Bland, it's the same stuff. It's still going on and nothing has really, some things have changed and some things have remained the same, honestly. Well, that's it for this episode. Until next time, everybody take care and be safe. Thank you.